Uh, another purpose is that um, maybe as you're going to study or review something, uh, you want to hear my voice explaining something again, you can always go back and listen to that in preparation for a test. You can use it as a review thing. Okay, so you guys have already wrote this down, but kind of officially starting. We're now going to start talking a little bit about chemistry. And whenever we talk about chemistry, we, we're first going to define what chemistry is, obviously. But then we go right back to the most simplest analysis of what a chemist does. And that's trying to classify what type of material we're dealing with. And so today's lesson is really on what we call the classification of matter. How do we put material into different groups so that we can understand it as chemists? So we can call it strand one. There's a text reference right there, but we haven't used the text yet. That's not a big deal. So we're going to write down right now a little bit about what chemistry is. And again, some of you uh, have already started to write this, and this is good. It's the study of matter, and we're going to talk about what matter is in the next slide. Uh, it's physical and chemical properties. So uh, how, when we look at a piece of matter, how do we describe it? How do we, uh, how do we explain what we're seeing, what we're sensing, whether we're seeing it or sensing it with our eyes and our hands and our, and our actual senses? Or maybe we sometimes will use a scientific piece of apparatus like a thermometer or a pressure gauge. So when I say we use our senses to measure properties, not only just our senses that we have, but other scientific apparatus that we have uh, developed over the years in order to study something. So we want to study their physical and chemical properties. How does the matter react with other matter if we put it together? Um, can we have something burn or can we have something uh, like, like iron um, rust or corrode, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And there is that part right there. What kind of changes does the matter undergo? So you're going to have to uh, let me know if I'm going too fast. All right, click, click, click. And let's talk about what matter is. So let's define matter. Um, some of you may already have the PowerPoint opened up, which is excellent which means if you're already done writing about matter, you can write ahead. That's what some of you are doing. That's, that's fine. That's up to you. But, but you might also want to pay attention and listen as well. Again, that's, that's kind of up to you how you want to do that. Okay, so matter is anything that has mass, which means we can weigh it on a scale, and it takes up space, all right? In other words, it has a volume of some sort. Um, you might ask the question, is there anything in the universe that doesn't have matter or doesn't take up space? And the answer to that is, is yes. Sorry, that doesn't have mass. And the answer to that is yes. Um, space itself is not matter, right? The space, the physical space in which we exist is not matter, um, but it is a thing. It is something that we can study. It has energy. Um, it can stretch. It can bend. Um, uh, Albert Einstein uh, proposed a theory that explains that when you have something really heavy like a planet or a star, that it literally bends space, and we now know that that's true. So there are things other than matter in the universe. Um, light. Light is something that exists, obviously. We can see each other, so it's there. But light doesn't have mass. It's a massless thing. It can travel at a phenomenal high rate of speed. It's the fastest thing in our universe. It travels at the speed of light. Um, it's, I, I know the number. It's like 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So eight zeros after the three. So it's super fast, meters per second. That's very quick. Uh, and that isn't matter, OK? Um, so we're only worried about the matter uh, when it comes to chemistry. We're not worried about the space and the bending of space. That's for physicists to deal with. So we're only worried about the matter, all right? We're just getting things set up uh, on our devices. No problem. We're good to go? OK. So what we want to do now is we're going to, and actually, you know what I'm going to do? So here we've got this, this note here. But I'm going to jump ahead. I want to jump down. Actually, I'm going to write it on the smart board. This is not just the classification we're going to do all day. There are subcategories to this, and I want to write them in. In other words, I want to write this complete chart before we go on and talk about the different stuff. So 
if I were to have a classification system that deals with matter, it would start by this. Now, why do we have such a thing? Well, years ago in the Middle Ages, chemists weren't called chemists. Does anybody know what the guy that maybe worked for the king was called before we were called chemists? Alchemists. Excellent. Very good. So alchemists were guys that studied matter, but they didn't really study it uh, as in-depth as we did as, as do as chemists. Um, does anybody know what the primary goal of the alchemist was for the king? The king wanted the alchemist to do this. Oh, eternal life. I forgot about that one. That might have been one. The elixir of eternal life. I forgot about that. That would be very important. What else were they trying to do? They were always trying to do this. Yep. Find a way to turn metals into gold. Yeah, to turn, to turn lesser valuable metals into gold. Typically, it was lead into gold, they would say. Correct. We now know that chemists can't do that. As physicists, we can turn lead atoms into gold atoms, but we would need very expensive particle accelerators. It would be a very complex thing to do because we would have to add some protons to, actually, we'd have to remove some protons from the gold. That would be a very hard thing to do. I guess, is there a way? I don't know whether a, a physicist has figured that out, but uh, as chemists, we can't do that. But as alchemists, they would have been responsible for explaining certain things. Let's say some farmer on the king's land came across some funny-looking rock that uh, didn't you know, look like anything else. He might go to the king and say, hey, I found this funny-looking rock. And the king might say, go see the alchemist. Maybe he can explain what that is. And then they would have to think, what is this thing? I don't know. Is it made up of a bunch of little things put together? Is it a mixture? Or is it made up of just one type of thing? One type of a pure thing. Is it a pure substance? So that's why we have a classification system, so that we can make some sense out of what we're looking at. Now, we're not going to look in details too much about mixtures. So there is some subcategories here, but we're not going to worry about that. But there are subcategories to this that I do want to worry about. So we're going to break this down into two more groups. All right, you're going to do that right now. Because I want to just make the, I want to put the breakdown all the way to the bottom. And pure substances can be broken into two simpler groups. One called elements. Oh no, element, element, and compounds. Compounds. All right. So the pure substances can be broken down into two subdivided groups called elements and compounds. Um, we can subdivide the elements and compounds again into subgroups, but we're not going to do that for today. But when we get talking about the periodic table, we can break the periodic table of elements into metals and nonmetals, right? When we get talking about compounds, we can break that group down into something called ionic compounds versus molecular compounds. So there are more subdivisions but we're going to look at that just for today. Okay, so then let's go back and look at some of these subdivisions. And the first subdivision we're going to look at is pure substances. Okay, pure substances. So now we're going to define all these things. So what makes up a pure substance? Don't mind me, I'm just uh, getting the Darth Vader lunchbox filled with Lego. Very important Lego. And I've got to take apart my fighter jet, because that's, that's, for, that's for the higher level chemistry. You guys aren't ready for fighter jets. <laughs> All right. Pure substances contain a single defining particle. Now, matter is made up of particles, little pieces, all right? So if we, could take a, if we could take a microscope and look closely enough at all matter, we would eventually get to the point where it's made up of tiny little pieces. And our classification is based on these types of pieces or particles there are. So a pure substance is made up of one 
single defining particle, one single type of particle. We didn't talk about mixtures yet, but if I look at my Lego, that's a mixture of Lego. It's got different colors, it's got different sizes, it's a complete mishmash. So this would not represent a pure substance. But if I started to quickly pick away at the Lego, I can easily put them into groups where all of the particles are exactly the same. I could even put together some compound particles if I have the right pieces. And if I make them look exactly the same, and I'm running out of blue squares, that's exciting. If I make them look exactly the same, they still count as a pure substance, okay? So if I have something like iron, iron is made up of iron atoms. Let's imagine that my red 2x4 Legos here are iron. We're okay with two, the term 2x4. There's two little dots versus four dots, like a 2x4. No? Okay. So my iron could be represented by those red 2x4s all the same. Here I've got an oxygen molecule. Oxygen is made up of two oxygen atoms put together. If I were to do a, an example of that, I'd have to put two, two things together like that, right? So my, my white ones here with two together could represent the oxygen molecules, but they're all exactly the same, two oxygen atoms put together. I could have something like a compound which is made up of sodium chloride, two different atoms put together, but they're all the same. So if all of the individual particles are the same, we say that they're a pure substance. And notice under pure substances, I have elements and compounds. These guys are elements, and this is a compound, but we'll define that in a moment. Are we okay with the idea of pure substances? It means that all the particles in the group are identical. Definitely not a pure substance. That is a mixture of things because there's more than one type of particle all mishmashed together. Click. So, I'm going to bring up a couple of other things. I hate all the animations. Let's then write down what a mixture is. And I'm going to grab, uh, no, I'm okay, I've got, I got something here. <clears throat> A mixture is made up of two or more pure substances mixed together. The composition is variable. If I were to have a picture to represent that, and it doesn't hurt to have some of these pictures, but again, the note will be on Google Classroom. If I have a mixture, then I have all these particles which are quite different together in the same container. So in this case, I've got my little evaporating dish here. I could take a couple of the yellow ones, one of these guys, one of this, and two of these, and I've created a mixture. Not that exciting. We say that mixtures can have a variable composition because I could create another mixture that contains the exact same constituents, but I could have it in a different ratio. One of these and two of these and three of these and one of those. Again, both mixtures contained the same types of particles, but I put a different ratio of them in there. So mixtures can be complex. You can have a mixture of the same stuff, but you can have different ratios, different amounts of them, okay? So mixtures are pretty straightforward. They've got different particles within them, and you can have all kinds of different comp uh, combinations. Some mixtures, you can see the particles in it. Like if I mix like gravel with sand, you can see that there's two different particles in there. Yep, that's correct. That's a mechanical mixture. That's the definition of that. The mixtures that I'm creating for you here, they're mechanical mixtures, you can see it. 
some mixtures you can't see the individual pieces. So if I put some salt or sugar in some water and it dissolves, I then can't see those. Do we know what it's called when you add something like that to water and it dissolves? Does anybody know what the term is called? Yeah. Uh, solubility describes how well it can dissolve. What is it called at the end when you're done and you've mixed it and you have this? Solvent is the thing that does the dissolving. These are great words. You guys don't have to know those words, but you're right. Solvent is the thing that does the dissolving. The water would be the solvent. But what do we call the combination of the two? Uh, no, a compound is a little different. It is a mixture. You've heard this word before. Homogeneous, that's correct, but there's another word for it. That wasn't what I was looking for. Sorry? Heterogeneous is the mechanical mixture, but that's not what I'm looking for. Starts with an S. A solution. Oh, yeah, you're going, oh, yeah, I remember solution. Yeah. Not a big deal. So if it's a homogeneous, we call it a solution. If you can see the individual pieces, it's called heterogeneous or a mechanical mixture. Excellent. Good stuff. All right. So, don't write this down. Let's just go through it. Tell me whether it's a pure substance or whether it's a mixture. Now, in the end, at, today, at the end of today's lesson, I've got a sheet that you can do for practice that does this type of thing, and I also have one that I'm going to want turned in. You're going to be analyzing this type of stuff. So, I'm going to put here a P or an M. What do we got here? What's this one? Yeah, Jacqueline? Pure substance. All the particles are exactly the same. Next one, what is this? What is this? I'm going to get up the back there, yep. M, mixture, different particles all kind of put together. What is this going to be? I've got to get some names. Your name again? Lucas, that's what I thought. Lucas? Um, now, it's, it's orange and red. Are, are you wondering whether these are two oranges and this is an orange versus a red? Let's assume they're all the same color, pure substance. I know they don't look that way, but it's, I didn't mean it to be quite that complex. But I, I know what you're doing. You're trying to think, oh, he's trying to trick me with this one over here or something. I wasn't trying to trick you. What am I doing here for this one? Eric, what do you got? Mixture. Excellent. Because I, I watch. Uh, you're getting all these notes down, Eric? Uh, excellent. Good. I'm just noticing that you're looking very, very closely at your device and... Uh, I'm hoping it's for good and not evil. <laughs> All right. Now let's take a look at some actual substances. And this becomes tricky because you need to know what's in those substances in order to do that. I do want you to write this down. I want you to write down pure substance or not a pure substance. And don't write down this on the bottom. We're going to put this in to their various locations. So just put is it pure or it's not pure? And we're going to classify these things. Now, you need to have some knowledge or some understanding of the actual substances themselves. And that's why this can become a difficult thing. Are, is there anything on there that you know for certain is one or the other without me kind of going through and saying, is there anything on there that you know for certain? What do you got? And where, where am I putting that? Oxygen. I agree. Oxygen. Oxygen. Can you tell me why you put it there? That's correct. How do you know it's an element? Excellent. We're going to be getting into talking about the difference between elements and compounds. And elements are found on the periodic table, which means if I have a sample of oxygen, they're all going to be the same. Excellent. Next, who wants to attack one? Yep, and it's Pat, correct? Okay. And why did you say that? Elements and on the periodic table. They're both pure. Excellent. So silver and gold. Do I have silver on there? Yeah. Silver, gold, found on the periodic table. Excellent. Remember, a compound can also be pure as long as they're all the same. So keep that in mind. Uh, Eric, what do you got? Excellent. If we're going to assume that a penny is pure copper, then that is correct. Does anybody know what a penny actually is? You'd have to cut into one in order to figure it out. A penny is actually made up of now 
zinc, which then was copper coated. But now we don't even have pennies anymore. They don't make them anymore. But it, 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 at some point in time, the amount of copper became so expensive that the copper that was put into a penny was worth more than a penny. You know what I'm saying? It was worth more than one cent. So when they were making pennies, it cost more than the money that they were creating. So we're going to assume that it's pure copper. That's a good assumption. That's what we all think anyway, and that's correct. Good. So what do we do? We got rid of this guy. 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 Good logic. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm going to get a name there. Is it? It's Cade. What do you think, Cade? Air is not a pure substance. Correct. That means air is a mixture. And what's in air to make it a mixture? Does anybody know what the things are that's in air? You got an idea there, Lucas? There's, there's not a lot of carbon in the air. If it's pure carbon, then it would, we would see the particles in there. Um, there's, there's not carbon, but there is a gas that contains carbon, carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide's in the air, yep. Nitrogen is in the air, yep. Oxygen is in the air, thank goodness. Any others? There's carbon monoxide in the air, that's true. But I, I wouldn't say that there's just carbon. Pure carbon is different. Pure carbon would be like soot. It would be black and particulate. Carbon monoxide can be in the air. We don't want there to be too much carbon monoxide in the air. Why is that? Why don't you want CO poisoning, carbon monoxide poisoning? It can affect the way our... Uh, we'll talk more about that later on. Excellent. So air is a mixture. Can you see the individual gases in the air? So what kind of a mixture does it make it? It's homogeneous. It's a homogeneous mixture. We, we can call it a solution. It's a solution of gases mixed together. Nice job. Air is gone. Boom. Next, anybody else? Come on, Brett, back there. You must have an idea. You got an idea? No, no ideas? I disagree with that. What do you got? Orange juice. orange juice. Excellent. Both of you saying orange juice. What about orange juice? Where do you want to put it? Not a mixture. I agree. Orange juice. Ha! <laughs> yeah, it can be pure orange juice, but that's not what we're defining as a pure substance. There is no special orange juice molecule, if that makes any sense. It's a mixture of molecules in there. Nice job. Anything else? Zach has lots of answers, but we want to share, we want to share the wealth. I'm going to go back to the back of the room there. Mitchell, what do you think, Mitchell? Where do you think I'm going to put distilled water? Not, nope, 50-50, move to the other side. Distilled water. Not, not in distilled water. Oh, we do, pure but it's pure. H2O. It's pure H2O. They're all the same. If I, were, I could make, if I were to put, let's say the black squares were H's and the red was O, I, I could represent those two black squares there right, I could represent that as being, as being an H2O. And if I had a whole bunch of those, I would, have, I would have pure H2O because they would all be the same, right? So, yes, it's a pure substance. If you get the water out of the tap and it hasn't been purified by distilling, where do you think it would go? Where would tap water go? Tap water. Unpure. Does anybody know what's in tap water that might make it unpure? They put fluoride in it to help our teeth. What else might they put in water to... to uh, we're not going to get into debate right now, but that's okay. I understand what you're saying. What else do they add to water? It's, it, they add this to keep it clean. Yeah, but, but it, it, it makes it not a pure substance. So chlorine is sometimes added to water. Uh, it, there's all kinds of stuff added to water. Uh, in, in an old place that has old lead pipes, a little bit of lead would get into the water. So there's all kinds of things in tap water. But distilled water removes all that stuff. Okay, that leaves us to the last one, which can be a little tricky to determine. Where are we putting this one? Yeah, what do you think? Uh, 
not. Yeah, milk is a mixture of all kinds of stuff. Uh, lactose, yep. What else is in there? Yep. Water. There's a, lot of water. There's a lot of water in it. Yep, probably mostly water. What else is in there? There is, there is different types of sugar. There's calcium in there. Milk fat, right? You know how you can get 2% milk, right? That's 2% milk fat. So there's all kinds of stuff in there. Now, they do make it get all mixed up so it looks like it's almost a solution, but it's not. Excellent. Good job. Okay. So we already did this. We already did uh, element. We already we already added the elements in the compound. So now let's go on and talk about the difference between an element and compound. Now, I know other teachers in the past would stop here and give you a little worksheet and do all that stuff. I think we're we're okay to continue. I want to get to the end of the note, then give you the stuff I want you to do, and then you can work at the end of the class. So we only have a few more things we're going to do here in this note for today. I know some of you looking ahead see that the note goes on and on, and that's because I use the same note tomorrow as I continue on with things. So we're only going to go a little bit further here, and then I'm going to give you some sheets to work on, and then you're going to be able to work on your lab as well. So now we're going to talk about the difference under pure substances themselves. So I'm just looking now at the two things that are under pure substances, and right here, all right, I've created some pure substances with some Lego, and we want to differentiate between the two. Elements. Elements have only one thing. So, sorry, the single particle is made up of one type of atom. All right? So now we're talking about a subdivision. We're talking about smaller little particles within the particle. In my example here that I was trying to make some water, I'd like to make one more water if I could. You can see here in each water particle, there are two different types of Lego, which means there are two different types of atoms within this. This would not be an element. In my yellow one, we could represent it by gold. Gold, see, I did that? No, okay. They all have the same type of particle, the same atoms. Therefore, that would be an element. In my representation of, say, oxygen gas, even though this one's discolored, each one of these has the same atoms. So elements, the particles have all the same atoms in them. So iron which I talked about as being red, all of the atoms are the same. Oxygen, which I used as white, all of the atoms are the same, even though there's two of them together. Water, which I put together like this, the atoms are not the same. It's not an element. Also, all of the elements will have a name on the periodic table. That's another way to determine which the one it is. So all of these things that we will classify as elements will have a name and a location on the periodic table. Are we okay with that idea? All right. Let me know if I have any questions. So compounds. Each single defining thing, each of its little things, we call these molecules, by the way. When we say defining particle, each molecule is made up of more than one type of atom. The example I got there is sodium chloride. The example I have here, water, H2O, right? Still a pure substance, just has two of these elements put together into one thing. Now, I'm going to just freeze the screen here for a moment because I'm just going to cheat ahead here. 
we've done, is it pure or not? I don't know why that same slide is there. And that's where we're going to stop. Perfect. Okay. So when you're done this slide, we're done today's notes to discuss the difference between that stuff. I'm gonna, I am going to guide you now to, to Google Classroom. I have uh, two things on there. And before I go to Google Classroom, I'm going to just stop my video making here.